but we have to caution you and ourselves that uh, that uh, we can't rush to, rush to judgment on it because uh, there are a lot of things in this business that look like the smoking gun but turn out not even to be close and so uh, we really have to do some regression analysis we've got to look at what Milt described you described to you and then back up in time through analysis to see if we can piece together the events and whether or not this was a tile problem or whether it was a structural issue or some other event we don't know yet what will help us determine that uh, is is inspecting the debris that will really help us and so we're very anxious to get certain pieces back to look at uh, and that will determine whether or not this particular event whether it was the debris hitting the orbiter or some other event was a cause of this problem or this disaster today okay get that gentleman right back behind him ryan korsgaard from kvue tv in austin you talked a little bit about the hardware what goes forward now with the astronaut training does that continue does that stop what happens well there's going to be a a period of uh, mourning in this community there's going to be a period where we're just going to get together and support each other and hug each other and, and help us go on. Uh, but we're going to fix this problem. We're going to get back on the launch pad. We're going to launch shuttles again as soon as we're ready. The training is going to continue. The best therapy in this business is to get on with your job. The best therapy in the flight control world is to get in that control center and train for the next mission. The best therapy in, in the flight crew world is to continue with their training. Stay focused on the job ahead. Stay focused on what we need to accomplish. And that's what we are all going to do. There's going to be a subset of us that will be working together to resolve this problem. And we will do that, and we will do that uh, quickly, efficiently, and we'll do it safely, and we will not fly again until we have this understood. In the meantime, life goes on, training goes on. We'll start manufacturing hardware again as soon as we know that we have preserved evidence. So in, in a few days, I suspect we will start pulling things back to what we understand and releasing certain activities to start up again. But in the next several days, it's going to be a period of quiet, of reflection, and where are we going to go from here as far as what we need to do to resolve this issue. Okay, Greg, let's work on the second row. Start right here on the end. Rashonda Rish Tate, Fox 26 News. Did you have a device on board that is the equivalent of a black box? Uh, no, we don't. We do not have an, a a a hardened black box data recorder or voice recorder. We do have recorders. We do have recorders of both data and voice. Um, if they survived the, uh, the entry and the impact, we will certainly look to see if there's any information there. Uh, as Milt mentioned to you on the timeline, he, he talked to you a little bit about these sensors that just kind of quit working. We also know that during this time frame, the vehicle was operating perfectly. It had gone into a roll reversal, which is a standard maneuver where the vehicle banks left or banks right. It's a standard maneuver, and when it does so, it does so to bleed off energy, and you do a number of these roll reversals so that you land at the right speed right at the Kennedy Space Center. It had rolled itself into a roll reversal, and everything from a flight control perspective was perfect. No indications of any problems. So we have some indications that it wasn't a vehicle loss of control issue, uh, and so we're getting some hints of where we need to go look. Um, whether or not these recorders survived and will get and will be useful to us, uh, I'm not really sure that's going to be the case. Okay. Anybody on the next person with his hand up there? Jake Dyer, Fort Worth Star Telegram. I have a couple of questions um, regarding the whatever it was, the foam that uh, apparently fell off the uh, 
the vehicle at takeoff. Was there any consideration during the flight that perhaps an EDA would be necessary that you guys need to go out and take a look? Secondarily, I, uh, I'm wondering about, you guys talked about uh, loss of sensor readings and sort of unusual sensor readings. Could you give us a sense about how unusual that is? I mean, is that, do you, is that, does that happen with any frequency or is that, was that something that was alarming that you'd never seen before? Um, the easy answer on, is the uh, sensor reading, and yes, that happens. The fact that you have a sensor that just quits working is not an alarming factor. Uh, in fact, we understand that several sensors can quit working, and uh, they're all result of not the sensor quit, quitting to work, they're a result of a box, an avionics box, a signal conditioner, or a uh, multiplexer demultiplexer that happens to fail and its signature to you and me is the fact that it looks like someone just cut the wire. Uh, and we've seen this on occasion and we certainly train for it many, many times over. So it is not unusual for us when we see it to look at it and immediately start to understand whether it is a single sensor problem or it's an avionics box. The team today looked at it as they are trained to do and could not see any common thread between this sensor and, an, and another sensor. There's nothing common about it and so that made it more significant. As soon as we understood it wasn't a common avionics box and that there were multiple sensors all completely independent um, and all this happened in a very short period of time, we knew that something was not right. Uh, now you asked me something else on the uh, on the phone. Uh, the idea of the spacewalk. All the spacewalks. We do not have the capability to perform a spacewalk and do tile repair. We do not have the capability, as you know, when we go out of the spacecraft, we operate really within the confines of the payload bay. On this particular mission, there was no remote manipulator system. There was no arm. Uh, and so all we had trained to do from a spacewalk perspective were those things that might be an emergency or a, 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 a latch did not work in the payload bay door closing sequence or something like that. We can go outside and make sure the payload bay doors are closed. We have no capability to go over the side of the vehicle and go underneath the vehicle uh, and look for a, an area of distress and repair a tile. We, we know we have no capability. If for some reason we thought we had a tile problem, the, the risk you take when you launch is that you may suffer a tile issue. We have no capability to repair it. All we can do is, before we launch, design robustness into the system so that a loss of some tile capability will not result in loss of crew or vehicle. Uh, does that answer your question? We have no capability to do that today. There is no capability to inspect it. We are not able to look on the underside of the vehicle. And again, our, our rationale, our retention rationale, why we believe we can are continuing, are, are continue to fly safely is that we test our tiles on the ground they're robust, they're hard enough to withstand certain levels of impact, and then we design our environment so that we don't have these circumstances. It, we don't believe at this point that the impact of that ET debris on the tile was the cause of our problem. We convinced ourselves as, as, as we analyzed it 10 days ago that it was not going to represent a safety issue. Now. We had the events of this morning. We're going to go back and see if there is connection. Uh, is that the smoking gun? It is not. We don't know enough about it. A lot more analysis and evidence needs to come to the table. So it's not fair to represent the tile damage as the source. It's just something we need to go look at. Uh, yeah, Graham, right there next to you. No, no, right here next to yeah. Gina Treadgold with ABC News. There are reports from astronomer at Caltech that the shuttle was, uh, debris was flying off the shuttle as early as a flyover in Owens Valley in California. How does that match up with this timeline and are you aware of those reports? Well, I haven't heard that uh, report. 
And sometimes as you uh, go through entry and are in a plasma, sometimes you see plasma. It looks like debris, but it's really not debris, it's plasma. Uh, it's just the fact that you're going really fast through the atmosphere. 